Hello everybody, Stephen here with Cardboard Coalition. Today I just wanted to keep with the Start Playing Game series and talk about some terminology you might run into, especially if you're new to the gaming hobby, if you're just stepping in or maybe fresh, you've gotten a game or two now, and there's terms that you'll hear getting thrown around. And one of the things I've noticed is people don't necessarily explain the term. Some of them are kind of obvious. Um, but people don't always explain the terms, and I think it's because they're so deep, they're so far down that road, they assume anybody listening to them talk understands those terms. Now, the term that we're going to go over today seems like it's been around forever, but I'll kind of go into the history of it a little bit, and you'll see that it hasn't been around that long, or depending on how old you are, it might have been around forever, right? Um, but the term I thought we'd go over today is meeple, right? A meeple, meeple, right? Funny name, fun to say, meeple. And what is a meeple? So the definition of, the, of meeple is a marker in a board game that represents a person or the player, right? So in the original kind of idea of the meeple, I'm looking around, I think this is the closest representation I have of a meeple, right? It looks like almost a T-pose, arms out, legs out person, right? An abstracted version, but a person. This one's from... Um, uh, Champions of Midgard. But going back to it, a meeple is a marker or a, a marker in a game that represents a, a person playing or just a human, right? So how did we get this term meeple, right? The story goes that a woman named Allison Hansen, I believe it's Allison Hansen, was playing a game of Carcassonne in November of 2000. And when they were talking about or asking for their pieces, because Carcassonne is where they originally kind of coined this term, they started using these, I, I um, guess. She had asked for her meeples, and it was just a merger of, as you might be able to guess, my people, meeple, right? So she asked for her meeple. And that that's the story. I don't know exactly who um, Allison Hansen is. I did a quick search. Um, the most popular version I found, or the, the name that came up the most, was an author of a knitting book for Harry Potter paraphernalia, but you knit it. Um, looking at over some of her stuff, it, it could possibly have been her. Um, she's into uh, Harry Potter, so you got the magic sorcery, probably into playing games and stuff like that. Um, but that's the story we have. That's the mythology behind the term meeple. Now... In the beginning, and sometimes people might tell you that a meeple is a wooden person, right? It's my, a wooden person. But that would be because the first idea of it is from Carcassonne, and you have little meeples that look similar, a little different, but similar to this. And they're your people, right? That you get to move around. Um, and so who knows if the story is true or not, not discounting, not saying it's true. It, there's a specific date which makes it interesting. On November of 2020, one person came up with this amazing idea that exploded, right? Maybe 20 years ago, maybe this happened 21 years ago now, right? Um, maybe, uh, but the idea really is that a meeple is a, a marker that represents um, a person or people on a board, right? So that's what a meeple is. You can remember it by the Maya people my marker, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds. The popular understanding or the thing that people bring up most of the time is a, a little wooden person. But as I'm going to talk about here in a second, there's more than just a person. So a meeple is a marker, right? We got the starter one, right? Just almost close to the Carcassonne, a little different. I don't know if Carcassonne has copyrights. And that's from Champions of Midgard. But you also have things like this little meeple, and this is definitely a meeple too or pawn or marker, and there's some debate going on about what you should call them. But this meeple is from um, Pull the Pins, uh, Zorro the Dice Game. And then you also have something over here that's just a circle, right? And this is from Radis Cardis. I think I'm saying it right, Radis Cardis, right? It's a game about the Black Plague. I think it's fun, but it's just a little circle marker, right? But meeples have evolved from there, right? Um, besides being just these basic markers, a lot of us have seen this style marker, right, with 
your your different games that we played as kids, right? These little wooden markers. Um, they're very popular, but they've evolved. So you have ones like this from Raiders of the North Sea, which represent some of the little Vikings. Uh, it's probably hard to see from there, but there's little horns, right? Um, and in the uh, Yarl box, which or not the Yarl box. Um, what am I thinking right now? Oh, never mind. I'm thinking of champions. There's there's one that's just a helmet with Viking horns that represents your markers, your your place. But these are from worker replacement games. Worker replacement. That's really not a worker replacement. These two aren't really worker replacement either. Is some of this other stuff. But you get this evolution, kind of Viking horns. Um, we have one here that's from Tiny Epic. Um, Blast off, tiny, tiny epic galaxies. Blast off, right? I think the original is tiny epic galaxies. This is the blast off version, and it's a little rocket ship, right? And everybody gets their own little set of rocket ships. Then we have stuff like Skull Hollow, which you have these um, meeples, but maybe a meeples, animal people. Um, this one's obviously a little warrior. You can't tell from there, but he's got a little sword, and they're color coded. So this is a two-player game. One person is the fox. One person is the monster trying to destroy Skulk Hollow. And this one, um, I can't remember the bear's name, but this is the bear. Um, and it's a big meeple. It's supposed to kind of represent the size of the two of them. So that's still a meeple. And then when you get over to the Jaws game, you have this fun little meeple, right? There's a little meeple, dude. Looks closer to the Carcassonne meeple, right? He's got a little boat for the first stage of the game. But then you also have this Jaws meeple, which I think is pretty cool, right? It's just a little mouth on a gray. It'd be nice if there's some little dots. One of my buddies had pointed out for eyes on the side. But then you have the little Jaws meeple. So there are different versions. So the best way to think about it, it's easy to remember my people for meeple, right? My people. But think it's the marker that you use and if you're, you, well, there's where the debate kind of can rage on, right? If you're using miniatures, minis, are they still meeples? They're kind of still your people. They're still your markers in a lot of games. I don't have any here. Um, in Destinies, they represent people, but they also represent your person. So it is your marker and it is, you can get people who work with you. So it's your people. So interesting. But the best way to remember Meeple is you can remember the little wooden dude, the traditional kind of looking little wooden dude, or just think, oh, that the little wooden marker that represents me on the board, right? That's my people, Meeple. So that's really the, the just a quick history or mythology behind the word um, Meeple. I hope you guys all enjoyed. And as usual, help us grow the coalition by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm Steven from Cardboard Coalition. See you later, everybody.